Hello everyone, Leanne here from healthfulpursuit.com. I have Instagram down here and YouTube up here and I wanna share um, some details about how to fast. Now, a couple of days ago I posted a video, kind of an intro of fasting, how it works for women. So if you haven't already watched that on YouTube, I'm gonna include links up here on Instagram, just head on over to my IGTV so you can check out um, some of the links there and some of the videos I've already posted. So today I wanted to go through more of your questions. So we've already done the basis of how to get going with fasting and the details there. So we're gonna get really into your questions. So the first question, um, I recently started alternative, uh, alternate day fasting. I'm loving it, but I'm worried I might be doing harm. So if you watched my last video, we talked about the best times to fast for women. That's going to be cycle days one to 10 and then right after ovulation for about three days. So alternate day fasting really is where we are fasting for 24 hours, sometimes more depending on how you're alternating. So these fasts are really great to do on days one to 10. So that's the first day you bleed up until the 10th day. And then again, three days following your ovulation. So if you ovulate on day 15, you can fast on day 15, 16, 17. If you ovulate on day 20, it's gonna be 21, 22, 23. You get the idea? Now, if you have no idea where you're at with your cycle, okay, this is something we didn't cover in our last video. If you have no clue where you're at with your cycle, the best way that you can um, monitor things, if you have amenorrhea or PCOS or your cycles are kind of all over the place, um, is the moon. So choose the full moon as your day one or the new moon as your day one and just follow it through and try to match it up as best you can to your cycle, but just so you have an idea and a template you can follow. Now, if you are in menopause or perimenopause, you're gonna have to, well, rather, if you're in perimenopause, you're gonna need to track things. If you are in menopause, um, you can just kind of, you have free reign. You can really do whatever you want, girl. Live your best life. So um, for this question, if you started alternative day fasting and you're doing it throughout your ovulation, you can screw up your hormones that way. If you're doing it very close to your first bleed, um, you can screw up your hormones that way. Um, your progesterone and estrogen need certain nutrients and need food in order to be balanced. And so it's really important that you are eating during those times and not fasting for more than 16, 18 hours a day. Is it okay to fast while breastfeeding? Uh, really good question, Lori. Um, if I were breastfeeding, I would definitely fast maybe 12 to 16 hours off and on, um, but it probably wouldn't be a daily thing. And it really depends on your milk production and kind of where you're at with your milk production and using that as a guideline. Um, okay, we already covered best and worst times to cycle on your fast. Again, that would be at ovulation, the worst time. At ovulation or leading up to ovulation, those couple days before ovulation, ooh. And then the, about a week to 10 days before your bleed, ooh, don't do it. And when I say fasting, I mean more than 18 hours, okay? Women can fast up to 16, 18 hours anytime you want. Um, Fat fasting, okay, if close to goal weight. Okay, so fat fasting is where we are eating anywhere between like 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day, primarily in fat. Like we're eating about uh, 80, usually closer to 95% of all of our intake is gonna be fat. And usually this is done for about two to four days just to break through a weight plateau. I don't usually recommend this, um, but I have used it with some of my clients depending on where they're at and if they have tried everything and nothing's working or um, they can't get into ketosis and we need to for medical reasons to get them into ketosis to start generating ketones, then sometimes I will do a fat fast. But generally I like to do a carb up more than a fat fast. And if you don't know what a carb up is, friends on Instagram, you can Google healthful pursuit carb up and friends on YouTube, I'll include a link down here, up, up here and down below that will explain what a carb up is. And I prefer to do that to overcome a plateau as opposed to a fat fast. Now, if you do end up doing a fat fast, it's not a lot of protein, it's all fat, you know, like you're eating fat bombs and a little bit, maybe a little bit of avocado, a tiny bit of chicken every day, a lot of eggs, a lot of fat, a lot of dairy, a lot of egg yolks, like, Take out the whites, mix the egg yolks with like mayonnaise or melted butter. Like it's just, it's a lot of fat, um, but it can help you adapt. 
So if you're having a hard time adapting and getting into ketosis and you need to get into ketosis, a fat fast can be beneficial, um, but just check yourself. Um, okay, how to fast with high cortisol and adrenal insufficiency. Yes, tips, don't do it. <laughs> No, the best way to fast is no fasting at all. If you have uh, high cortisol, um, adrenal insufficiency, adrenal dy uh, dysfunction, I don't recommend fasting. I recommend a highly dense uh, ketogenic diet, highly dense um, carb up cycling. You can learn more about this with my Happy Keto Body program. If you go to happyketobody.com, you can learn more about that. And that takes you 12 weeks through healing your body with a ketogenic diet and really the ins and outs about that. Uh, what can I consume that doesn't break the fast that helps me when hunger hits? Okay, so there are a couple of ways to look at fasting. One is autophagy fasting, where we're helping the cellular regeneration. And that is when we're just having water maybe black coffee, maybe tea. But if you find that you cannot fast past 12 hours, bone broth, super nutrient dense, really, really good for you, a really good option. Now that's going to break your autophagy fast, but it'll definitely help to regulate your glucose. That's okay. If you find by having the bone broth, it's pretty low in fat and you're still hungry, adding just a little bit of fat in the form of coconut oil, lard, tallow, butter, ghee, whatever you respond well to, blend that up and have that can be helpful or a fatty coffee. Now, in the past, I've recommended a rocket fuel latte. I still find that very helpful. If you have imbalanced hormones, you can just go on the Google machine and type in helpful pursuit rocket fuel latte or maybe even rocket fuel latte. I don't know how many people have copied my recipe by now, but you'll find it. Um, so that's an option if you have imbalanced hormones. If you don't, I'd recommend just a black coffee with a little bit of fat blended in, just like the um, bone broth, to just give you that satiation but not take you over the edge. This is another great tip if you are doing longer term fasting, 24 hours, 40, 48 hours or beyond. If you find like you just need food and you think it's hunger and you're a little bit worried and you're shaky and all the things, having a teaspoon of fat can go a long way to just see like what's going on, how am I feeling, it could be enough uh, to help satiate you. So. That's it for today. So many other questions have come in, so I will definitely keep on making videos about this. So if you are on Instagram and you don't already uh, follow, at Leanne Vogel, definitely do that, and I will be coming out with another video very soon for you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button right down there, and there's a little bell. You can click that to be alerted when I come out with a new fasting video. I have a feeling we'll do, like, four to six videos on this. So um, we'll just keep answering your questions. Um, they're really, really great questions and I love helping you. So I will see you then and I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs> Bye.